Good day, my excellent Aziz Najani Center. Mr. Aliwa, you are welcome. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Okay, we are going to be looking at um, the statement that was accredited to the Vice President of Nigeria recently, where he was saying that he don't know what Anobi would have done differently. But he said because almost all the major political parties and their candidates in that 2023 election promised to remove subsidy on gasoline. And the same thing they did. So do you think there's something that we would have done differently, Mr. Ariwa? Good morning. Thanks for having me as the spokesman of the obedience in this particular place. Um, Peter Abu is my leader, and um, uh, which I have so much trust on, which I, which I believe is artistic speaks good record of him, which I believe that if Peter Abu were to be a Yoruba man or an, or an Aousa man, he would have been the president today. Now that's where I'm going. If you say oh, what Peter Abu, what would he have, what, what would he have done different? Go to Abia State, for example, and tell the Abia people what would Alex Oti have done different. Now, every Abia person, as let, well, let us assume that that the Abia State, um, that woman, that um, Miss Imenaoti, God will always bless that man in Jesus' name. That woman, assuming that woman compromised, because she was threatened, she was bribed to name the wrong candidate according to her, but she now named the right candidate in, in Alex Oti. If that woman had, had, had named the wrong candidate, the lot of money, till today now, they might be asking Dr. Alex Oti, what would you have done different? But today, go to Abia State and tell them, the man is commissioning new rules. Rules that, but well, last you see that they didn't do anything. The man is commissioning new rules. The man is, the man is, the man is making sure, is, is, is making accountability in government. The man is using innocent as a, as a car, for example. So, now you're not asking what would my leader, Peter Abia, have done differently. Peter Abia said before election, before you tax people, you empower them. He said it. Now look at his government. They are not taxing people. Someone that annoys his money, they are asking him to pay tax. Look at the amount of tax they are taxing people. A time is coming in Nigeria that even if you are a mother, you want to breastfeed you breast your child, they will ask you to pay tax. A time is coming in Nigeria that if you are working, they will ask you to pay tax. Even when even I am talking, as I am a billionaire, they will ask you to pay tax. So, if I am understand you, as part of what Obi would have done differently is that he would have empowered the people before taxing them. That's what he said. Listen, I have everything. Like I always said, I'm a spokesman of, uh, of the obedience movement in this place. I have everything that, 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 that he said he's going to, he's, he's going to do. That's why I can't pay for him. And, and I've said, people are asking me that today that how much did they pay you? And God knows he never, 10 million nobody gave me. But I believe in, 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 the, in, the, in the leadership of Peter Obi. I believe in who he, who he, who he is. But let me tell you, what I believe most in my life is human capital development. Let me take two examples before yeah. democracy in 1999. Our leader in Yoruba land, the greatest Yoruba politician ever, Obafemi Awolowo. Obafemi Awolowo gave our people, Yoruba people, free education. It is when you go to school, then you're able to decipher between, between light and darkness. Knowledge empowers, it emancipates. So now, now what my leader Awolowo did was to make sure that these people were educated. Then Yoruba was first in Nigeria, as a fact, Western region, the first television station in Africa, WNTA, which is now NTA, the first radio station, newspapers. You understand? He made sure that Yoruba people, they, 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 they were ahead. That's human capital development. Number two is, is, is the civil war. After the civil war, the Yoruba people, they give the 20 pounds, the Yoruba people. What the leaders did was to bring the best of the system of government, the best ever in terms of the system. What, what did they do? They made sure that, for example, you serve a guy for how many years? Then your guy empowers you with money or he gives you shop. Then as a man, you can be able to stand. Instead of begging, that's why today you see people everywhere. Who would have known? If, if somebody that, 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 that has never been in Nigeria before, and does not know he's to come to Nigeria, if they tell him that this people could have owned this place before civil war, no, he will not have believed. But because of human capital development, they could, they could stand up after the civil war. You understand? Know that's what people have believed in. He, he made sure that, for example, another person was the first in education. Which is a fact. That's human capital development. Those who are not, that are not going to school, that they will not come back. I do something. In my language, they said, It means that instead of you to, instead of you to build the house, build human beings, build your children. If you don't build your children, that house that you have, that house that you have built, those children that is not built, they will later sell the house. That's what I see in Lagos. They are selling the houses of their fathers. But they didn't build them. They are defending their fellow property. They are not selling their houses. So he, I'm talking about human. So people believe in that. To so invest in people, then if you invest in people, 
then you're not going to see the output. That was the plan of your business. There's a plan here. It's not about come here to. So Peter B is different from Brother Ahmed Tinubu. They are two different people. They can never be the same. Okay, let us look at the advice of Obi to the current administration of uh, Senator Ahmed Bola Tinubu and governors that they should look towards that was on the, the um, economy into agriculture. Yes. Are they taking advantage of that? That's no. Right. No, it was Peter Abid that said when he went to the north. No, are they tapping into that advice? We are not tapping into it. That's what I said. I said, before the election, when Peter Abid went to the north, he told them that the other people, that, that you have vast farmland, that I'm going to make sure that this this agriculture will become a thing of pride to you. Instead of you not coming to Abidjan to be begging for money, if you invest in agriculture, then, that means, I mean, I'm talking about human capital development, that means you can be easily taken out of poverty. But if you don't, if you don't, the same now, Paul Ahmed, you know, our president, went to Kano, that's the largest state in the north. He said, during a campaign, I only come here to dance. Then compare them. So Peter Abi always has solutions. Something you know, you, know, you cannot give up to Dr. Wallace. I've always said it that no matter how no matter how many years you pray for an alligator, it will never become a crocodile. No matter how many years you pray for a goat, that goat can never become a cow. You cannot, you cannot do more than your capacity. So what they are doing now in the federal government and the separate, that, that's their capacity. Look at what the South is doing. Okay, look how functional it is in Lagos. That is not capacity. You can't give what you don't have. We're talking about having something to offer. Giving, as I'm talking about half food. So the governors, they can't think outside the box. I'm, I'm not blaming them. But you can't compare now as I'm talking in Nigeria. No contact on close to Peter Obi as of now. Nigeria don't have any other option. If Nigeria is a normal country, Peter Obi will have been the president. Thanks for having me. I must say, thank you. And this is Nigerian Center. Thank you for your time.